Hello everyone, it's uh, Reverend Deanna Cox here. I am uh, the minister with the United Church of Canada, serving Daysland, Killam, and Roseland communities, as well as this online community of DKR United. And this is our midweek reflection for the last little bit of January and the first bit of February. We are in the midst of a worship series um, exploring how, uh, uh, how we understand our faith so that we can articulate our belief to each other and to the world um, so that we can share our light. We are in the season of Epiphany which is about a manifestation of realizing who Jesus is for us as uh, Christians and also kind of a, I think of it as the season of growing light. Um, we have I've, I've just seen a post that we've made it through the darkest weeks of our year uh, in the northern hemisphere and that we are the light is starting to return and I've actually noticed that you know else I can work till five almost six o'clock before it's really dark which is um tricky because then i don't realize i have to go home <laughs> so anyways joking aside we are in the season of growing light we are in a worship series talking about sharing our light our stories of our faith with others to bring hope and inspiration and this week we are talking about inclusivity and as I was reflecting on what I might say and share here today, I was reminded of a Bible study that Reverend Scott Reynolds and I did um, a little, well, near the end of 2023, um, not that long ago, actually. And uh, it was, I had, the inclusivity part, I started out with talking about how the United Church of Canada has done all these things like they had the first woman was ordained in 1936 um you know we were one of the first churches to allow um queer queer people to be ordained and full members of the church to we are first to marry all kinds of things like that and so i am very proud of the inclusivity of my church Yet at the same time, uh, in that session, Scott pointed out that I had lifted up the joys of inclusivity, um, where we can, with open arms, welcome others in. The challenges are that people have often held up for the United Church. They claim that we don't believe anything because we are such a broad spectrum church. And so that is a joy of our inclusivity, but it is also can be a challenge in that we regularly live, work, worship, make policies with people who can believe quite dramatically differently than, than us. It's, it's tricky, but um, a colleague pointed out that even the fact that the United Church of Canada exists is a testament to how deeply we value that inclusivity. It was founded in 1925 by um, the merging of Presbyterian, Methodist, Congregationalist, and a few Union churches. And they came together and set aside their differences enough to make one church that has lasted. And so as I was thinking about both sides of the um, in, of inclusivity, inclusivity, the joys and the challenges, I thought, you know, it, I remembered back into one of our worship series where Robin King talked about um, wrestling with our understanding of God. And it's not that we have to have a precise definition, but that we are always open to wrestling with it. 
And so that's how I thought about inclusivity is that our world continues to grow and change. And so we're always having to wrestle with what it means to be welcoming, to be inclusive, what it means to embrace the unconditional love and grace of God. Um, unconditional is <laughs> unconditional. <laughs> There's no rules or stipulations. You are not required to earn a certain income, um, you know, to dress a certain way, to own a house or not. It, it's unconditional. And it's, that, is, that is tricky for the best of us. And um, so I, I think that that constant wrestling with what does it mean to embrace the unconditional love and grace of God, not only for ourselves, but for our neighbors, is what inclusivity means to me. And I am proud to be a part of a church that continues to wrestle with what that means, that apologizes to our Indigenous siblings for the residential schools and the 60s scoop and is wrestling with what truth and reconciliation means for each each community of faith. I love that although in 1988 we stated as a national church that we welcome all regardless of sexual orientation, it is still up to each individual community to do that wrestling and find out where they are with it. Um, I love that we are being held accountable um, for, you know, kind of racial or prejudicial policies and, and called to not just not be racist, but to be anti-racist in, in how we live and how we be as a church. Um, is it easy? No. People are complicated and messy, and so inclusivity can be complicated and messy, but it is being open to that call to do that. Um, I have behind me a labyrinth uh, wall hanging that was lovingly made for me when I was ordained. And it's, um, I love labyrinths. They were actually very helpful to me in my discernment process, which is a story for another time. So this has a lot of meaning. And the fact that it's kind of like a rainbow material and, you know, and so I, I was thinking about the labyrinth of love, like that is what life is, is kind of navigating this journey of love, unconditional love, and trying to be as open and welcoming to others who are also navigating this labyrinth of their own, and just trying to break open our hearts to um, include them in and their perspective. So I think that is where my midweek reflection for this week will be about the joys and challenges of inclusivity and just being open to wrestling with all of that and journeying this labyrinth of love in our lives. Take care, everyone. God bless. Bye.